All right. So we are talking to Ariana today um, and we are so excited because she just got back from her wedding and honeymoon. um, And it was kind of the you know, pinnacle of the journey for her. Uh, and she's been able to continue with a lot of the habits through really hard times of a bachelorette party and planning a wedding, which is a stressful time. Um, and so we are really excited to chat through your journey of what you experienced with coaching with Liz and I and evolve. Um, so welcome. Thank you for doing this for us. Um, what would you say is like the point that your journey started in terms of weight loss and this not even like with evolve, like in your life, like, have you been trying to lose weight in the past? What have you tried in the past? What have you struggled with? Um, you know, what t- take us back to the beginning. Yeah. So I think it would really come from, this is so bad, but even middle school, I feel like, you know, in my household, it was always, you know, watch what you eat lay off the candy, all this kind of stuff, but I was always in sports. And so in middle school, I was always, I would say thin because I was in two different sports and then high school too, I was in sports as well. So I was always physically active. And then once college kind of hit, that's where I noticed, okay, my body's changing because I'm no longer, you know, being physically active all the time. And when obviously when you're in college, you're drinking and you're, you're eating out all the time, you know, because you don't know how to cook or you don't have time to cook because you're studying. So I felt like I really struggled during my college years to kind of be comfortable with the way that I looked and the way my body was changing. And then after I graduated college, that's when, you know, the 30 pounds came on heavy and, when I was traveling for work, kind of not understanding what I needed to do because I was eating out because I traveled for work so much. And I think also what was so ingrained in my, in my head was, you know, you lose weight by not eating right. And by cardio, by running. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. That's what I would do is I would try and eat salads and I was still hungry. And then I would just run and nothing was happening. So when I got engaged, I said, okay, this really needs to stop because every year I would say, I'll do it this year. I'll do it this year. (laughs) This is the year. And then when I got engaged, I said, okay, I really need to make a change because I want to look and feel incredible, you know, yes, for my pictures, but also myself, I wanted to look and feel incredible the day of my wedding. And, you know, that's where, like I said, I've, it's been since middle school that I felt uncomfortable, not knowing what to do, listening to someone over here, like a mom and dad or friends who have completely different body types than me. So it was a struggle for sure. It was a struggle trying to find my groove. Yeah. So, you know, you were running, you were traveling a lot though for work and then still trying to restrict in certain ways. What were some of the mental and kind of emotional struggles that you were battling before starting with us? Yeah. So I have always had anxiety, very, very bad at certain points. You know, it would get worse when I was traveling. It was really, really bad just because you're different airports, all these different things that are happening, you know, canceled flights, all that. But I would say that when I would have these periods of anxiety, I would shut down. I would not want to work out. I did not want to, I didn't have the motivation to say, okay, you know, we're going through this time where we're not feeling so hot. Um, we're going through these mental challenges and I'm just going to sit on this couch and eat chocolate because at that point in time, my comfort food was chocolate. So I thought I was healing myself by giving myself some time to kind of process my anxiety or whatever was going on and just eat chocolate. Cause that made me feel good at that point in time, not knowing that I was not taking care of myself by doing that. So I had, you know, my anxiety was really high. I also felt that once I transitioned to just fully working remote and not traveling, I felt like that anxiety 
was 10 times as worse because I was just sitting at my desk and I didn't know what to do. And, you know, you have all of this like energy and your body wants to move and you're not moving. Yeah. And I struggled a lot with that. So I feel like I was snacking all the time too, because again, I'm saying, well, I'm, I'm having really bad anxiety. So I'm going to go snack because this is what makes me feel good. So I was doing a lot of that during, you know, quarantine and this new job that I, that I have now. So, you know, and I just felt like mentally, it was just all fueling the wrong things. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard. Like you said, you didn't know where to go or how to handle these emotions or, you know, the triggers that you were responding to, like, how could I maybe respond in a different way? So I'd love for you just to kind of share with everybody watching this today, you know, what motivated you to start with us? Like what made us stick out um, to you, maybe from some other options, if you were looking, you know, for other options to help you at the start of this journey? Yeah. So I actually was on social media and I was actually on Instagram and one of my friends on social media was sharing her experience with her coaches. And, you know, she was raving about her coaches and how much they were helping her. And coincidentally, she also got married in October. So she was an October bride. So I had chat with her. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. So I decided to do research and um, I really wanted coaches that I was going to be comfortable with. And my husband was a personal trainer in his past life. So I said, I'm not doing that. I am not going to have him, you know, help me and do all this stuff because that's just not going to work for me. Yeah. And I also need someone who understand, understands women and women's health, you know, and the different body types. I love my husband, but I don't think he really, he knows, he knows guys, right? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that's fine. That's great. So I really did do a deep dive into the research. I looked all over social media too. What really grasped me was the amount of content that you guys had out there. Like, on your Instagram. I also listened to the podcast beforehand because I wanted to really feel like, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to actually do this. And I'm going to enjoy working with the people that, you know, are going to be my coaches. So I, that's how I found you guys was just doing the research and then going through social media, your social media pages. Yeah, I remember, I think you reached out to me one day and you're like, this is me. I think I shared a little bit of my story and we got to talking about that. Um, And I'm proud of you for doing that. We tell everyone, I think it's very important for you to research and to understand, you know, who you're going to be working with, because that's a big, big part of um, success in the journey, just that you have that personal connection. So When you started, let's talk about like, you know, that time of your life, where were you and what were some of your goals? I mean, you can totally share, um, obviously you've made amazing physical transformation, but even from the mental and emotional side of things, would love for you to kind of share what some of your goals were coming in besides just the weight loss. Yeah. So when I first started, it was, you know, I think I had just picked out my wedding dress. And I had said to myself, I love the dress. I'm not so sure if I love it on me, you know? So that's when I knew, okay, I have to make a change. So when I started, I was the heaviest I had ever been. The heaviest I'd ever been. I was not active at that point. Um, I was still, I was still running, but not as often as I was before. So it, it was really like a low point for me. And I was reaching almost 180 and I looked at myself and I'm like, this isn't, this isn't me. And I'm not comfortable in my own skin. And I just remember thinking back to getting dressed, trying on outfits was just the biggest struggle ever. I, I, I could not imagine, you know, like, I'm, I'm so glad I found a dress. (laughs) I'm so glad I found a dress, but it was at that point where I said, okay, mentally, I, I don't like what I'm seeing and I don't want my husband to see that. 
I want my husband to see, wow, look at her. She loves herself. She, I, I love her. She loves herself. Like, this is great. And I was thinking to myself one day where I was making up excuses where I was saying, okay, I'm not going to work out or things like, cause I want to spend time with my fiance at that time. And I sat there and I said, okay, I'm making excuses for myself because I, I want to spend time with the person, this person, but I'm not truly my best self right now. So is he actually, does he actually want to spend time with me? You know, because I'm not a very happy person right now. Mm -hmm. So when I started this whole thing, it was just, it was kind of like a trying to prepare myself for this lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people think, and I've had a lot of friends say to me as well, like, oh, you're dieting. And I didn't, I don't see it as dieting. I see it as a lifestyle change because a diet I see as a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Right. And what you all showed me and what I, the, even the first few weeks of this was just kind of like fixing my relationship with food. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, I feel like that was the first thing. And I'll have people ask me, well, how do you, what do you eat? Like, how do you do it? And it's such a loaded question. I know. <laughs> it's not A plus B equals C. It's mm-hmm. actually you have to really take a deep dive. And the first few weeks was me trying to understand why do I do the things that I do? Mm-hmm. I love that you put it that way. Because I think a lot of people are like, well, just tell me what to do. Like, tell me the diet. Tell me what to eat. Tell me what to not eat. Um, and I'm like, well, that completely depends completely depends on where we're coming from. It completely depends on your tastes and your likes, your triggers, your environment. Um, there's so many things and to be able to design the best help, you know, health and lifestyle for you, it needs to be tailored to you. And so it can't be an answer to someone else of, yeah, I'm following this meal plan and it's working for me. No, like I, I decide what I eat based off of my goals and based off of what I'm learning about food and about how my food responds to my body, um, and how I feel consuming certain things. And so I I love that you kind of, you know, you, you tell people that it's not as simple as what do I eat? Um, so what would you say, you know, throughout this process were like your, your favorite moments and your biggest accomplishments for yourself? The biggest moment to me, I thought was going to be when I hit my weight goal and it wasn't. And it wasn't to me when I hit the weight goal, I was like, okay, to me, the biggest like wow moment was actually when I was lifting weights, Mm -hmm. seeing how, when I first started compared to, you know, when I started lifting heavier and when I started seeing the definition in my body, that's when I was like, oh my gosh, like my body can actually look this way. You know, and that was to me the biggest wow factor, the biggest accomplishment to me, you know, was that getting toned, getting, you know, I would have people say, you look so, you look really thin, you look really good. And to me, I was like, yeah, like, that's great. But I had one of my friends who said, oh my God, look at your arms. (laughs) And that to me, I was like, yes, (laughs) my (laughs) arms. Because that you work so hard and that's where I think I found my joy where before I feel like so many, especially women have a misconception about lifting Mm -hmm. about, well, if I start lifting, I'm going to bulk up that. Well, it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. It's not that it doesn't just happen. It's, it's a lot of practice and it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So to me, it was that moment of, wow, I can lift weights and not have to run every day and lose weight. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, I think that dieting is such a deprivation mindset. And so like, yeah, we can lose weight, but I feel like it's something that a lot of people, you know, they're, they're happy about it, but lifting is like, you're proud. Like, it's like, I worked for this, like this is, and I'm not saying that people don't work to lose weight, but it's just, you're building up versus breaking down you know? And so I think it's such a, you know, empowering thing for women, especially, um, to be able to feel strong and also realize that lifting weights doesn't mean you're going to take up more space for many women. You take up less space because muscle is denser 
and it takes up less space than fat does. And so a lot of people reach their, like their smallest technically when they're, you know, lifting weights because of how the body changes shape. Um, and I love that you mentioned too, that it wasn't the weight goal. Cause I think so many people get so obsessed with that weight goal when in reality you get there and you're like, oh, that's it. Like now what? That's- I thought this was going to be this grand, you know, celebration and the scale was going to talk to me and tell me great job. And and it's, you know, it's so much different than that. So I'm so glad that you. I love that you mentioned like, that's where I found my joy too, because one big thing that we always talk about with our clients and, and you as well is we want you to enjoy what you're doing and be proud of it and feel empowered by it. And I believe, if, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that joy came prior to us hitting the weight goal on the scale, right? Like those comments that you were getting from people, because in total, you were down about 30 pounds, 20, I think 29 pounds, 29.2. Um, but I believe this was kind of maybe five or 10 pounds before you hit that number on the scale. And I love that you said, you know, I found my joy because our journey should be joyful. We should be happy. We should be proud of what we're doing because you put in the hard work to build that confidence every day. So I love the, those are the, the key words that I just wanted to reiterate for everyone to hear because it shouldn't be miserable either. If it's miserable and we're not enjoying it, we won't ever sustain it. So you've gotten married. We're down about 30 pounds. We've um, had an amazing honeymoon. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, now that you've graduated the program, what are your next goals? Or are you happy right now and, you know, plan to just maintain and keep lifting? Or what does that look like? Yeah. So it's funny because in our house now, we, it's not like, okay, this is over. And then we're going to go back to our old ways. So we have still, con- when we got back from Aruba, we were like, I turned to my husband, I said, I think we need to go into a cut. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I think you're ready. <laughs> so we really try, you know, we, what's nice about it is that I have a supportive husband who also has a background in this. So he, he knows, okay, if I'm asking, Hey, we should go into a cut or Hey, I this week, let's not eat a lot of processed food. Let's not go out. Or we try to be very smart with our decision-making when it comes to eating out. And it's again, a lot of people say, well, you're dieting. No, it's just, I I just learned to listen to my body, Mm. right. Learn Mm. to listen to my body. So before I struggled a lot with inflammation, right. There was a period of time where we saw that stuff wasn't really going on Mm -hmm. and it was inflammation. So I, you know, now going forward, our, my goal is to continue to keep up with that. Listen to the body. Yes. We're going to enjoy ourselves here and there. I have a drink here and there, but even when we, when I was in Aruba, you know, I would sit there and I say, okay, just because it's an all inclusive resort does not mean that we are going to go buck wild here because I'm not going to feel good. So, you know, continuing to listen to my body, keep with, you know, trying to, again, we're going to enjoy life and do these things, trying to limit my processed food intake, just because I know it doesn't make me feel good. I just know how lousy it makes me feel. So continue to listen to my body, continuing to lift. I think even after we got back, um, I told my husband, I'm like, I just had a really good lift. Like I felt really, really good, you know, and that it just, I remember, I think it's Becca who would say to me, I never regret a workout, you know, like it's hard sometimes, like you don't want to do it, but I never regret a workout. And it's true. Like just continue to do that just because that makes me feel good. And you know, I will continue to run here and there, but my main focus will be to continue to lift, listen to my body. So rest days as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, as a couple, you know, I, I so thankful that he understands this because I also feel that if it could be hard, if you have someone in the household who is like, well, I like to eat out five times a day, five days out of the week. And you know, not aligning with, with my goals, but, you know, we're talking about kids too in the future. So coming up soon. So that's another thing that we're thinking about is, you know, I heard on uh, your podcast episode, and I think we talked about this before too, is how not only does a woman have to take care of her body, 
before getting pregnant, Mm -hmm. but also the man. So, you know, we're in the talks about that. So trying to, you know, really watch what we eat when it comes time to start that whole process. So yeah, yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting times for us. I love it. I love it. So what would you say is like one of your favorite parts about the process? Like that we went through the program, like things that you enjoyed about it, things that you were happy to have as part of it. Like, is there anything that stands out to you around the program that? Yeah. So I definitely feel that having you guys as, as coaches, I feel that having that accountability, you know, where it's not a one-on-one every week, every other week, but, you know, still having that support system, you know, when we're on the group calls, I think that was huge because it's like, oh, I didn't lose, you know, what I wanted to lose this week. That's okay. Look at all the other people who are also feeling the same way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're still working towards something and that's okay. If it's not happening right away, right. It's going to take time, but definitely having you guys to have us, you know, holding me accountable, being like, okay, what's going on? You know, we didn't hit our intake goals or did you, how many days of the week did you work out? Like what's going on? So it's not, to me, the program was more than just, uh, okay, are we eating enough? Are we moving enough? It was more of a, hey, let's have a mental check in what's going on, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that to me was extremely important because, you know, now Gabby, my sister will sometimes say to me, if we're, we're having back and forth about something, she'll be like, well, what would Liz and Becca say? She said that to me earlier this week. So, well, what would Liz and hey. Becca say? <laughs> She's uh-huh. like, well, what did Liz and Becca say? Where we, it's kind of like that tough love where it's like, you have to take care of you first. Yeah. And that's something that I really learned from all of this. It wasn't just, you know, very important. You have to eat in order to lose weight. Like you still have to eat. You have to work out. You have to move, but you also have to put yourself first. So that to me was a huge, huge thing that I needed to understand and having you guys there as my support system, you know, was so helpful because there was days where, you know, I would tell you guys, you know, okay, well, this is going on. It's really stressful. And, you know, one of you would check in, you know, during the weekend or something like that, you, Hey, so how's this going? And that to me really meant a lot because it feels like you, you're in my corner and you're there to support me right? Not just there to say, oh, we didn't hit our, our intake goal. It's more than checking the boxes, you know, it's really understanding that each individual, you all live different lives. We live different lives, you know? And so there's so much that goes on behind the scenes of, I would say this to my trainers at our gym previously is like, you see that client for an hour a day. There's a lot of other things that go on in their day for the other 23 hours, right? We have to understand that and be empathetic towards it. And let's check in on those things. Like, I know we would talk a lot about like the bachelorette party or different weekend trips or things, you know, where you had said, these are my commitments. This is what I want to follow through with. And then if we did awesome, we would talk through that, how great you felt and a time or two, which is normal for everyone, myself included, things didn't always go as planned let's reflect on it. Let's learn from it so that the next time we have the awareness and, you know, we can do better because this is an ever evolving process, not just within, you know, the six month coaching program, but really for the rest of your life, as you go through pregnancy, postpartum, right. Um, motherhood. (laughs) So, um, I love that. And I think the, the more that you can continue just to remember that you deserve to put yourself first and that you are worthy to put yourself first, you can continue, you know, your progress the rest of your life. And I have no doubt that, you know, you will maintain and you will continue to be healthy and really have made this a lifestyle. Um, and which is one thing that Beck and I, that's why we love, you know, what we do. So if you could summarize, um, kind of like, how would you recommend this to a friend? Um, I know, you, you know, we're putting you on the spot here, but if you were going to recommend coaching to a, your best friend, summarize kind of what you would say. Yeah. So I've actually recommended you guys to a few people already. Um, but what I would say to people is, you know, when you do something like this, or when you sign up to work with you guys, like I said, 
you have people that are supporting you have a, a group a community that's really behind you as well like I still remember some of the stories that I heard from our group calls you know from some of the women there and I would sit there and I would say wow like that woman is really going through some things and she's still chugging along and she's still putting herself first and that's incredible so I feel like this community is just so warm and welcoming, you know, so it really starts from there feeling like you belong somewhere. And because I feel like anyone who's coming into this for the first time, you have no idea what you're doing. You are like, am I going to be able to do this? Am I going to be able to change the way I do things? And, you know, culturally from a standpoint, you know, we don't have the best Mexican culture doesn't have the best, you know, I won't say the word diet, but we don't really watch. Yes. Way, maybe. <laughs> we don't really like to, you know, we like to eat what we eat. And, you know, I thought that was going to be a, a huge struggle. Okay. How am I going to do this? But to me, it was the community. You're going to have support all the way you have. You, if you have questions, you can always ask questions, whether it's the Facebook group or messaging you guys directly, which is extremely helpful. And you're not alone during any of this process. You're not alone. And to me, it was great to have another person with me to go through this. So yeah. when I had my sister go through this process with me, I just felt like, okay, I need, I need my buddy right here. So it was, it was a lot of help. It was helpful for me to have her with me too. But looking back, I could have done this on my own, right? Because we have such a strong community with each other. Um, you know, it's also the, our website where we get to see the different workouts and how to do it. I had a lot of questions on, am I doing the right form? You know, cause when you're lifting for the first time, you don't really know. And I don't want to ask my husband, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want my husband to see what I'm doing. So, you know, watching those videos of proper form, you know, what to do recipes. So different things. So you have so many different resources. So that really is how I spin it to spin it to my friends where I'm like, listen, this is what you do. You have your weekly call, you have your biweekly calls, you have your group calls, but this is all that you get within this community. Right. So, and I've shown them, this is what you do when you take pictures. And then this is what your progress. So I, I really, I really tell people that it's all about accountability. It's all about the community that you're in and just putting yourself first. So if there's anyone that's thinking of, should I do this or should I not do this? Should I wait? Just do it now. And that's how I came to the realization of like, okay, it needs to happen. It needs to happen now. Absolutely. I love it. I mean, I, we talk a lot of times about how a lot of people always weigh out the cost of things, but they very rarely weigh out the cost of not doing things. Right. And, you know, where are you going to be if you don't do this in three, five, 10 years um, and don't take control and don't learn about your body? Um, and it's, it's so much like I always ask people, like, how much would you pay if you could not have to worry about food anymore? and be in a body that you love and feel good in. And I think a lot of people would pay way more money. Like it's, it is, you know, priceless to a lot of people. And so that's what I try to spin it as in terms of, I would, I would never, ever, ever take back any of the money I spent on learning about my body and learning about how to, you know, feel my very best, because to me, that's all that matters you know, that and my family. Um, but I'm not as nice to my family if I don't feel good in my body. So that's, <laughs> it's all included. Um, thank you so much for, you know, joining us and talking about your journey. And it was Referring amazing. People too. Jacqueline started with us last week. Yes. So, yes. um, it's been, you know, really cool to get to know her. And I know that you've said you just continue to share with other people and we really appreciate that. So 